Ramble. DuJour means welcome to Guilty Pleasures, the show that loves what it loves. What's up, everybody? Today we are talking about the 2001 movie Josie and the Pussycats. I'm Zach Kornfeld, joined in person <gasps> by Kelsey Dara wow. and Garrick Bernard. Wow. Whoa, you're yeah. real. You're I touched real. you. This whole time, yeah. we've, been, we've been real. We're not living in your computers. What? Yeah. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. We are vaxxed, we're waxed, and we're ready to talk about movies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're waxed, we're vaxxed, and we're back, baby. Yeah, and we're yeah. back. And I got Rick a, had surgery on his back. On my fucking back. I got a, I got a wax one time. Yeah? Um, I got what a kind? fucking whole Brazilian. No what? way! Yeah, whole situation. Hold just, on. Just to see the pain that my girlfriend was going through. <laughs> you got a Brazilian wax yep. on your dick. Yep. And wow. butthole. Yep. And inner thighs. Mm-hmm. Did she Just... enjoy how you looked after that? I don't know. No, I didn't enjoy how I looked after <laughs> I that. No one would. Because it, it just looks like a fucking Muppet. It's just like a yeah. Muppet nose. Yeah. And it's just like, there's some weird shit going on I in agree. it. I don't... Why would you do that? Because I wanted to to be, I, I don't know, closer to who I was dating. <laughs> but here's the shit thing. Like, I would do that. For yeah. a video. That's what yeah. I said. But like you just did it. Yeah, I just did it. That's what's fucking weird to me. Is That's you, weird. No I one... feel like it's brave. I feel like you're mistaking <laughs> weirdness for bravery. I think I... you're an icon. I think I'm an icon as well. But no one knows about it. That's what's not brave. She do. Is Does she think you're brave? Yeah. <laughs> the one who matters. See, Kelsey, you and I, like, we We're aren't capable likes. of doing anything yeah. without people knowing. Yes. Mm-hmm. Attention whores, I believe, is the word you're looking for. Yeah. Rick, not so much. No, he's got it on lockdown. He's a cool attention whore. That's what stand ups <laughs> are. I think he's a better man than us. I think he's a better mm, man than you, Kelsey. I don't think so. Doubt it. I don't think so because I if she didn't notice, like, yeah. if she didn't say anything, I would have lo- lost my fucking mind. <laughs> I, I thought, yeah. have never wanted to see you naked before, Rick. No offense. That's but fair. I would like to see what that looks like. Okay. That's Next fair. time you wax your dick, <laughs> you bring us over. Now um, that you said Muppet, I'm imagining okay. your belly is really hairy, and mm. then there's like nothingness, and then a nose. Mana, mana. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. I <laughs> no, it's just there's no border between <laughs> between. It's just flush because I'm I'm not I don't have a hairy stomach. I have no body hair whatsoever. Oh. Here, here's the deal. We are going to have to get into the movie, but okay, yeah. If no, this but is, but first. Is, we did if, not need if to. and when you are going to show us your waxed yeah, nether region, we're going to have to see your pre-wax just mm-hmm. to know the difference. Yeah. Yeah, or like maybe you could draw this, it. This is probably the first solicited dick pic <laughs> anybody has ever seen. <laughs> I've been like, please send me that. Yeah, dick yeah, pic. yeah. Please. What do, do I have to do to see uh-huh. that dick? Okay, mm-hmm. talk about the movie. Well, I'm I'm so happy to be in person with you guys because yeah. it's we've been doing damn good, yeah. but talking over Zoom like like the the riffing, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. challenging. It yeah. sucks, but we're crushing it. Oh yeah. yeah. So kudos to us. Yeah, yes. We're going to be back on the Zoom for, frankly, most of the episodes moving forward because uh, we're going to have different guests come in. We want to be as safe as possible. But when we can, we're going to be here in person together. It yeah. feels good. Mm. Yeah. So let's talk about Josie and the Pussycats, we guys. Have to. If you're coming in with this energy, I'm going to straight up fight you. Yeah. I'm in person, bitch. You, you can't. <laughs> you can't, <laughs> you can't threaten me. I can't make threats. Threaten yeah. <laughs> my yeah. fucking listen. Yeah, you got to hide behind the law. It's I know. Like, <laughs> I will tell you my, my personal connection, but first, um, a quick synopsis. So... Yeah. Following the death of super boy band du jour, Josie and the Pussycats find a record deal. Uh, Josie, they're, look, they're just three best friends. They're wannabe rock stars, but they find out that Mega Records is actually using their music and the music of all major music groups to plant subliminal messages to control the youth of America. Josie and the gang must fight the forces that are trying to rip their friendship asunder. <gasps> asunder. Good, good word, right? I hope I used bad, it yeah. well. And fight the forces and something, something, save the world with yeah. their rock music. Yeah. Yes. Um, so this movie came out in 2001. It was a bomb. Of course. It did not It did not make a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, dismissed by the critics as something that was trite, right? And you have to remember when this came out, this was the height of the TRL era. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to tell you my personal experience with Please. this movie and where it interacts with why I think that Frank honestly truly this is one Don't of the it. best God pieces of art about that era that exists okay. and I, I really believe that with all my heart okay and it's why I also dismissed it so m- I saw this movie I liked it fine my little sister shout out to Steffi Kornfeld hey, was a nice. fucking nut for this movie oh. it was like she only liked 
four pieces of media and she watched them again it's and like again. Years to a Spice and again. Yeah. And again. Yeah. Yeah. It was Anything a Spice World beaches. experience where Garrett grew up watching Spice World on repeat, and because of that, you hate it. Because you're, su- you're obsessed with it. You were obsessed with it. I'm as not child. obsessed with it. It <laughs> is one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my all life. For all for our guilty whores out there know that that reference. <laughs> what, what did you say your t- your people were called? Oh, um, trash babies. Trash babies. And mine are guilty whores. And mine are the little guilty sluts. I don't know. I don't know. We're calling them a little dirty. So. I, she dressed up as Josie. I think she dressed up as, as Melody, the drummer, Tara Reed. She dressed up as her for three Halloweens in a row. Whoa. So I got to this point where I'm like, yo, you fuck this stop. movie. This shit is trash. Like, it just. This like, is your older sister. My younger sister. Oh, I'm sorry. And so. It's mean, dude. I just, sister. like, I couldn't handle it anymore. Like, when you go back, like, at the height of the TRL era, it, it this just felt like too too much like just a reflection of what was on TV. It's almost like if you made mm. TikTok the movie yeah. is kind of oh. what it felt like to me at the time. Uh, yeah. Fast forward years later. Far removed. I, I'm, I'm on my way to college and I have a combo DVD VHS player. Oh, uh, fucking rich guy so that I could. Here. Well, yeah. these were very, it was a very outdated technology oh, at this point. Okay, never mind. Poor uh, and in driving to college, the DVD player got busted. <gasps> and so what I was left with was a trapped DVD <gasps> of Josie oh, and the Pussycats. So God, that I is am, fate. So That's I am now hilarious. left with a VHS combo Josie and the Pussycats player. And we were like, you know what? One night we got high and we're like, let's watch this movie again. And now I we watched this movie one time and two times and three times. All of a sudden, we are watching this movie on the regular and realizing as adults, holy shit. I missed all the themes. Mm-hmm. This movie isn't just surface level about TRL era. This is the defining political. This is the defining social commentary reflecting yeah. on this time. Yeah. This is incisive, cutting, observational comedy that I really like. I do not think that people, if you watch this movie as a kid, you do not realize <laughs> how hard it was hitting. Kelsey doesn't believe me, but I'm going to prove you wrong by the end of this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I think this movie is This is hilarious. where Zach unwinds, you guys. You're watching a grown man unwind publicly. A fucking banger down. of a soundtrack. Every song, no skips on the yeah. whole soundtrack. And finally now, it just had its 20th anniversary. Like the world <laughs> is is realizing this this gem that we all missed, and it's having its moment in a way that really it, truly it is. is like, yeah. Who is talking about this? The world, Who? Kelsey. Where? When name one you're person? Gonna, you're you're going to be upset because you're going to read the comments. You're going to be like, "Oh no, I'm a bad guy." <laughs> you think I'm going to be upset for me and the gonna, bad be, guy. You're gonna be like, oh no, everybody's mad at me. Oh, I'm no. an internet person. I'm used to the hate yeah. comments. That does not change the bones of my morale, which is that I <laughs> didn't like this no. movie and i had never seen it before so i came with fresh eyes why didn't you yeah. like it well i'll tell you the guilt later but can i start with a pleasure that you mentioned well yes well do you have something else you need to do i just want to know if garrick liked it Garrick, do you i like did it? like it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i liked it a lot um i liked it a lot i think it is the definition that of I'm a guilty surprised. yeah i think it's the definition of a guilty pleasure i i'm skipping ahead to the end but <laughs> i think it is because you can end this it, year, guys. it is yeah we're we're done um, it is truly um, the best or one of the better um, tonally tonal satires yes! that I've seen in a while. Yes. Um, while also <laughs> being suck it, Kelsey. While also being wrapped, wrapped in a will, Zach. <laughs> whip it out right now. Yeah. We're, we're live, baby. You can't fucking threaten me with your dick anymore. <laughs> anymore he's never done it before <laughs> sorry Rick, you I threatened totally me with your dick you for the last time Cornfeld. <laughs> <laughs> i'm calling your bluff one of the funnier uh tonally correct satires wrapped in a bad movie <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. so it is can, a bad movie well i can accept that because like it is it hits all the beats of a teen movie right yeah. and like it's about the power of female friendship this is clearly made I don't for think young it girls does oh <gasps> yeah i don't think it does um hit those points at all well, I don't, okay we'll get we'll wait for the yeah, guilt then okay. maybe in this show we talk about the pleasures we talk about the guilt and we're mostly gonna talk about the pleasures guys because it's a perfect movie <laughs> uh sure but I have so many pleasures. I will defend. You didn't even write anything down. <laughs> I, That's how much he knows. I, I'm not kidding. I was watching this again last night. I know this movie by heart. 
That was my crossroads. Like, I, I, I was not just the songs. I want to go to a sing along for this. And, like, not even just the real songs. Like, <laughs> Alan M just being like, taking my drug for granted. Stupid little bits. But I know, like, what I can recite one liners as they are. Are happening. there sing alongs in the country that show this movie? Can I tell you? Yes. This is, like, one of the true pains of my life. For, uh, okay, about two years ago, mm. they had a live. Josie and the Pussycats event where the band who sang this <gasps> the songs for this oh, wow. God I'm blanking on her name I will I will have it it'll come to me by the end of this episode they performed a concert no. live before the movie and then they had the cast come it was awesome what? here in LA where uh, I want to say it was at the Ace Hotel Theater oh wow and I I'm telling you it's got a huge cult following now okay sure I had to be in New York to promote our book it was like the day our Try Guys book came out and I'm like fuck this stupid book oh yeah. my god celebrate Josie and the Pussycat books books are forever yeah, this but... is one day and this was one <laughs> night damn one That's night up. only like Oh, fuck. I mean, crushes that me. That would be so funny if they were just like, well, Zach couldn't be here. He had a very <laughs> yeah, heartbreaking emergency. Um, he had to go in there. Someone in his family passed, passed and away. he can't come yeah. for the book launch. Thank you guys for coming to buy this book, uh, but fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got shit to do. This right. took me a year. I've been watching Josie and the Pussycat. Wait, Rosario Dawson time. was there? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, you fucked up. I, okay, I know you. I know you got some pleasures. I'm just gonna launch with pleasures, okay, just go. to just to set the scene of this movie. If you have not seen the cast, you got Rachel Lee Cook as Josie, Rosario Dawson as Val, Tara Reid like as the most hilarious dummy that you've um, ever seen. Tara Reid walked so Amanda Seyfried as Karen and Mean Girls could run. Thousand percent. Wow. I'm gonna talk about each character. Like we'll, we'll dive yeah, into yeah, them, but yeah. just give you the overview. Alan Cummings as the your favorite actor, apparently. So good mm -hmm. as the the evil music exec, and then as the mastermind, Parker Posey in one of the truly great campy performances. Listen, yes. man. Parker Posey not being Elizabeth Banks was fucking oh my God. making me lose my, You're mind. my mind. I was so mad. I was like, this is Elizabeth Banks. It's not Elizabeth. Is it Elizabeth Banks? <laughs> this is Parker Posey. Fuck, is it, it Elizabeth Banks? Elizabeth and then I was like, oh, well, I that's pitch perfect. That. You know, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Banks was in yeah, yeah, pitch perfect. Yeah, 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 I was just like, oh, this is the same role. And that's why it's like. As fucking. Effie and Hunger Games, those outfits, I was like, she's the villain. Like, yeah, she's yeah, the, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. whatever. She's like the bad good guy. Right. And it that I can't believe you said that. Yeah. That I looked at her and I was like, Elizabeth Banks' teeth look that long? I feel like that's not her no, teeth. I, thought, I literally thought that Elizabeth Banks had veneers, and I was about to start that rumor. Whoa. You know, he's like, oh, she Go just changed her right whole teeth. Go on Twitter right now. Fucking tweet it. You won't. This was one. <laughs> this was uh, one. <laughs> Elizabeth Banks has veneers. Your friends has got veneers. Are you okay? Yeah, no. EP's um, got veneers. Yeah. I, I, I I've, got the, you, I've got the glasses. The, they live glasses on. I can see clearly. Wow. Yeah. So... What else Elizabeth you got, Zach? I got, but you guys go. I've talked so much. Okay, yeah, you have, which is shocking because normally I'm the one that's like, mm -hmm. well, I'm going to be pretty quiet this episode until we get to the guilt. But a pleasure I did have was I did like the music. Yes, I did enjoy the soundtrack at that time in 2001. I probably would have been bopping my head. For some reason, musicians love the counting method in their songs, where it's like you got one night. Two, three, yeah. three six four. whole hours and yes. five long days. That's yeah. just a, all your life to come on down. And, and down. as these songs were playing, I was like, Zach knows the lyrics to all Everyone. of these songs. And I couldn't remember. <clears throat> First of all, I forgot that this is based on a comic, that yeah. this is based Archie's. on the River. Yeah, yeah, Riverdale. And then the show Riverdale came out. So I was also like, wait, who's Lily Reinhardt in this scenario? She terribly, I couldn't figure it out. But the music, I couldn't figure out. Are th were they an actual band, Josie and the Pussycats? Yeah, they you, like. You mean in the world of the movie or in real life? No, in real life. Oh, no. no, they never like Rosario Dawson never no. like toured with Tara Reid. No, I think you're thinking of the Cheetah Girls. I am thinking of the Cheetah yeah. Girls. You're thinking of the Cheetah Girls. I've been cooking a lot more at home lately, which is why I'd like to thank today's sponsor, HelloFresh, for letting me skip those trips to the grocery store and make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. 
HelloFresh, of course, offers convenient, contact-free delivery right to your doorstep for easy home cooking with the fam. Look, the recipes at HelloFresh are super easy to follow and quick to make. If I can make them, you know <laughs> that it's good. Uh, they got steps and pictures to guide you along the way, so not even an idiot like me can mess it up. I'm a big fan of the balsamic chicken rustico. I'm just like, ooh, look at me. Am I in Italia right now? I'm so rustico. I feel fancy. I feel like I'm on a little vacation. Uh, I've been cooking these for Maggie. I seem like a, a hero. I come into the to the kitchen and I'm like, hey, babe, you take take a load off in 30 minutes. I'm gonna have a perfect meal on the table. And she's like, oh, my God. So if you want to be a Stanley Tucci, go to HelloFresh.com slash Guilty12 and use the code Guilty12 for 12 free meals, including free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash Guilty12, code Guilty12 for 12 free meals and shipping. Okay, well, this should have been the Cheetah Girls. It should have been an hour-long Disney movie. We did not need as long as it was. I'm sorry, I'm already in the guilt. I remember it. So, shout out to Kay Hanley, who is the singer of Letters to Cleo, who wrote, uh, or who sang as Josie. But if I remember correctly, there are, like, uh, someone from Fountains of Wayne. Oh, th um, so Adam Schlesinger from Fountains of Wayne, who recently passed away very tragically and mm -hmm. young, he made some songs on this soundtrack. Uh, you've got a dude from the Count, um, Adam Duritz from the Counting Crows. Of course. Uh, and you've got, I want to make sure this is right. I think, ba yeah, Babyface produced this album. That's hilarious. <laughs> Babyface produced. fucking hilarious. It was good that's, music. Yeah, that's like finding out that Jay-Z produced a Fall Out Boy album. Oh, <laughs> that's what, that would be yeah. fucking sick and well, really, no, like. No, he did. Metally. Wait, you no, know, he did? He did, yeah. What? what? Um, I, I, I think, whatever, I, I think it's Folly Ado. Folly Ado, I think that's, it's uh Jay-Z produced album. Shut the fuck up. Well, okay. We could dissect the discography of Fall Out Boy on another podcast. We should do one music episode one time. I would love that. Yeah. yeah. I, I, um, but that is like, it is, look, there are a lot of movies about bands, but they don't often have soundtracks that slap. Oh, wait, and, Timbaland did a Weezer album also. Sorry. Oh, that I, I think I know. That. How about that? Yeah. About that. Um, but just, the music in this was like, it, it could have lived on its own. Yeah. Like, I think a Spotify playlist with just these tracks probably does really well. Hell yeah, it does. Finally, this album, uh, can I tell you also, for the 20th mm. anniversary, mm. I bought <laughs> I bought this soundtrack on vinyl. Oh, I was supposed to say, I thought you got the fucking cat ears. I was like, I'm not putting No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> he has the cat ears for sure. <laughs> yeah. I bought the soundtrack on vinyl, and it comes with a du jour 7-inch. No. So no. you have, like, the the main album and then a no. little, yeah. little album up. for du jour. Also, du jour's song is called... Uh, Backdoor Lover. Backdoor Lover, which is definitely about being... The yeah. anal. It's about anal. Bed. The lyrics are like, I'm going to come inside and show you that special spot. Oh. It's, well, and I love, yeah. okay. Yeah, it's, so it's vile. So that's right, what, yeah, that's what made me remember that it was Josie and the Pussycats and not Cheetah Girls. I was like, oh, this is the oh, dirty. dark, dirty yeah. version of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Especially the fact that they die in the beginning. In the beginning. Which is very funny. So I thought that was. The beginning, it starts with this boy band that's clearly making fun of Backstreet Boys and NSYNC, yeah. Yeah. where they're going on their tour or whatever, and everyone's like standing for them crying, like they're getting proposed to, oh my God, marry me, I love you so much. And then they get on a plane and they hear a track by accident that, yeah. has the subliminal messaging and they're like manager guy tell us what this is and the manager's like oh shit they oh, know oh, we so they him. the manager goes i'll be right back goes to the front of the plane gets the pilot and they parachute out of the plane yeah. insinuating that this boy band has been murdered yeah. and crashes to their fiery death insinuating we're jumping all the way to the end they they live. live. They survive and they, they come, come to back save the, the day. It's great. Major shout out to the cast of DeJore. Huh? Uh, you got oh. Seth Green, Donald Faison, Breckenmeyer. So funny that we didn't remember the fourth person's name, but he's the only one whose face we see at the end when they come back because oh! the other three people are famous yeah. and they're not doing this <laughs> Shut movie anymore. Shut the fuck it's, up. That shit was so funny. I was just like, oh, well, of course they wouldn't be able I to come did back. Not, do busy. you think they wrote Faison that ending later? They, I think no, they- I know why. Uh, oh. oh. Well. So the directors, um, uh, uh, Deb Kaplan and Harry Elfon, this was their second movie. Their first was Can't H Hardly Wait, and that actor was in that movie. So that was like an, a buddy of theirs who they oh. put into this film. Okay. And the other one just didn't want to come? Well, oh, that, that, I it's think... like one day. It's like, oh, yeah, I'll come and shoot this movie for and a day. Donald like Faison was like big? in Scrubs, Scrubs, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, 
Okay, so basically, like, for anyone who doesn't watch this, which I don't recommend, so after the boy band, th- they think yeah. dies, uh, music executives are like, we need to replace this boy band immediately. We need someone that can, like, subliminally massage the brains of uh, the teen. So they he almost hits Josie and the Pussycats with his car as they're crossing the street, and he's like, boom, perfect. You guys are in the next one. And within a week, they have the top charting billboard songs and are about to sing to a stadium full arena and they blast into stardom and they they fast forward a lot of the bullshit like there's they don't they they skim the entire thing to make a point and throughout the movie the point is that there's subliminal messaging which means throughout the movie there is subliminal messaging in this movie so which is a we've got huge pleasure of mine. major labels in literally i wrote down just in the very first scene the brands that we see in the airplane is a target ad a coke can a monkey with a candy bounce ads on the tv soap on the chair 17 magazine a fondue kit apple raven and diesel just in the plane scene so that's like i thought that was clever yeah that they kept pushing that agenda well so i didn't get it as a kid like you don't it's i mean it was you don't so, yeah you, you wouldn't would it? no it was so regular it was so normal to be sold to and yeah. this movie just took the dial and turned it up to 12 yeah but yeah. now if there's a fucking budweiser and fast and furious we're yeah. like that was a hundred thousand yeah. dollar scene right there yeah yeah, no, 100%. So maybe I needed to have watched this when I was younger. In 2001. Like <laughs> yeah. yeah. So there are uh, approximately 73 companies with product placement in this movie. And, and like, because I'm not kidding, like even that scene where Wyatt, uh, Alan Cummings is driving, his car just has Ray-Ban stickers around it. Like every mo- And that to me is an attention to detail where whether you like the movie or not, the directors had such a clear and well-executed intention that I think is overlooked. Like this is not... A, a trite movie. This is a movie that knew what it was doing. Because I, it also doesn't feel over the top. It feels like right at the top, and then it just like sits what? there for a second. It doesn't feel over the top. No, because it's like if this is what we're going for, you cannot. Okay. Yeah. If this is what if this is what the intention is, and this is what we're gonna go yes. for all of the way, then you can't say that this is a over to, over the top. Okay. Thing. Then you this are is... hitting to to the point of one of my pleasures, which there's only four. So fuck them. <laughs> okay. The By the so... way, real quick, none of the pro- none of the companies paid for their. Product I was going to ask. Of course yeah. not. That's yeah. very funny. They, they probably just put just it took in. The major ones um but that brings up a good point that what i did like was the self-awareness of yeah. the movie which they break the fourth wall sometimes yeah. especially when they're being cheeky or you mm-hmm. would expect a character to and this is basically one giant snl skit like yeah. <laughs> it felt very like zoolander i thought it was an Will mtv Ferrell. movie for yes. a while yeah. I, but like, apparently yeah, it's it not. was that bad yeah. that i thought it was an mtv movie well, but i, I did so appreciate right its self-awareness which makes me wonder how i would have viewed it when i was 11. I couldn't imagine thinking of it as two different movies. It was like, there are, the way that people do product placement now, they're like kind of gearing, they're they're trying to be slick sometimes, and then other times they're just like, well, fuck it, let's just not, let's just like make it it a thing, make it a whole thing. Mm -hmm. Like in a community with like, there was a KFC episode where they were just like, oh, we have to do a KFC space adventure or whatever (laughs) in the in the um, parking lot. And then um, there's a scene where Ken Jeong comes in with a KFC snacker and he's oh, just I like, he's just like, oh man, uh, KFC keeps on trying to get me to do product placement or whatever. <laughs> and he's like, but it's really weird. It's self-aware. But this chicken is good though. And it he is, just walks away. Yeah. It's self-aware. And it's just like, that's like the, I think that's the smart way of doing it nowadays. But yeah. if you, um, back in the day where I'm, I'm losing my train of thought. No, but, but it was smart to do in this movie because it was made in 2001. So yeah, for them to have that self-awareness right. was actually pretty It was clever. actually a, a little bit ahead of its time. Yes. But the way that this movie would have, put, it would have put it at the top for me, oh. right? The tippity top where I'm just like, the reason why I think it's a bad movie is because of uh, them not landing the plane or whatever at the end of it. Like the people did land the plane. Oh, you wanted them to fully die. I, I, no. Wow. <laughs> I did not Y'all want them to fully die. First. Um, the ending sucks. The ending where the, the, the big. 
We're on the pleasure. I'm oh, sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. I was sorry. so nice to Crossroads, your garbage movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mark, I you, held it in for so is, long. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Now. He's speaking but, out of spite. He doesn't but we're that. we're already here. We're already here. I'm Let's already go saying for it. it. I, I'm I already will, saying it. Zach's two. Zach Throw is shaking down. both yeah. of his legs. By yeah. the way, people. Yeah. Both are simultaneously going. Um, I'm already saying it. But yeah. No. No. Go. The ending. I didn't like the ending. I didn't like that. Um, this person was doing this. The the whole villain was doing this because people were mean her in high school or whatever i would have been like yo it's money it's money at the end of the day every fucking time it doesn't matter feelings i'm not feelings are like you know i should be myself it felt like a like a shoehorn way of ending the movie but if at the end of the movie during the concert and they played in front of everybody (laughs) they were like this sucks (laughs) i would have been like this is the greatest (laughs) movie movie of of all all fucking time time." because at the end of the day you suck. And like the only reason <laughs> why you are good is because this industry pushed you right. forward into the forefront right. and was telling everybody to listen to your stuff. That's more so real. So if you sucked at the end of it, that would have been hilarious. That would have been so fucking That'd've... funny. But I think that, look, I mean, this is a movie Rick's 14. <laughs> this no, is a movie 14 girls. And at the yeah. end of the day, yeah. the power of their friendship prevailed. Yeah. It's a kid's movie at the end yeah. of the day. You have to see the kids triumph. But in a weird way, the villains also triumphed. Because, yeah. spoiler alert, that you realize that these music executives are the one putting out these subliminal messages because she was made fun of for having a lisp, which I had... Which is why I also hated this fucking movie because it tapped a little too deeply also, into my soul. But also she learned how to control the list. Exactly. So, so let's just I. go about your day. Childhood trauma stays there forever. And yeah. so she m- made this entire billion dollar All of your choices industry. are just a projection of your pain. Right. We get it. There you go. Someone's been to therapy. Uh, and <laughs> she's been putting in other people's ears, the people that work for her, that think they're already scheming the world, yeah. are getting schemed to like her and put her in power because she was made fun of as a kid. Yeah. And so... Fuck, what was I saying? Well, you're tapping into the what to me is one of the true joys of this movie, which is its campiness. And that ending, so Fiona... Right. Oh, that's what it was. The ending. Yeah. So they end up revealing their true selves where she has her lisp. Yeah, and- Fiona has been is mean because she she was insecure as a kid. And then uh, uh, Wyatt is actually white-ass Wally. Yeah. He's like, white-ass Wally was my favorite part. He, that he reveals was that he was albino and fat and like was faking a British accent to fit in. And I think it kind of plays into this idea of how we all are hoping desperately for trends and consumerism to make people like us. Here's a pleasure. I, yeah. The surprise uh, moment where, okay, so in the show, they, or excuse me, not in the show, in the movie, they're trying to make Josie the center of attention and pull their friendship apart and make the two girls feel like just backup dancers and so that they rip apart their friendship, right? So they tell the two backup dancer girls, singers, They're not backup, players, they're a band. Right. Yeah, they are in the band. <laughs> Rosario and, and Tara, that they're going to go be on TRL and that Josie's not. So they think they're getting special treatment, but when they show up, it's a fake set and then they're like, well, is it a fake set? Because Carson Daly's here. And then Carson Daly, it turns out, is actually a guy who also kills celebrities for the music executives. Yeah, Carson Daly tries to kill uh, Tara Reid yes. with a baseball bat. And it was, so I was very not pleasantly surprised at that uh, like reversal because they could have had it be not as silly, but I bet Carson was just like, just devouring that silliness because he gets to be the one hit host wonder and that's all he's known for. So to be able to like chase Tara Reed around with a bat baseball bat and act like a fucking manacle serial killer, that was funny yeah. to me. Fun that's fact, funny. they fell in love filming that scene. And Beautiful. then they got then they broke up. That's, that's how they fell met. in love. That's where they I met. also really liked Tara Reed in this. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about her. I thought Rosario, <laughs> she's such a fucking talented actress. They did not give her much to work with they mm-hmm. gave her like the jealous friend role but that was it i didn't feel anything you else you didn't feel that emotion no, no but tara, <laughs> tara no because was... i didn't think that they were actually friends yeah <gasps> yeah and that's oh the, my god that's fucking the pause the, the the podcast i that to me is the try i love their friendship i Do you adore think their friendship where, where are they now do they meet up they well, met on a saved... zoom last week who's... <laughs> really? I, I watched it um how's your read <laughs> Uh, she's not doing too well. Yeah, we know. Sharknado. No, she's doing great. I love you, Tara. If you're watching, we I'm please come on the podcast. Yeah, we'll do Sharknado. Um, please. No, I thought she was so. That was the perfect casting for that role. And honestly, they they were all well casted. I just don't think they all were given very emotional journeys. But like, she plays such a pure soul and such like a, a type of person. She's like bubbles from the Powerpuff Girls, yes. but even dumber. Mm-hmm. And that the most hurtful thing you could say to her when they're having their big friendship blow up moment is that 
puppy she says puppies grow up to be dogs and dogs get old and die and that's the worst thing you can say to Tara Which Reed's character then leads to the uh, crying montage where she just goes and looks Lays at puppies in a window and cries it's so funny to me yeah. That's funny to you? Yes. There were, yeah, there were a good amount of moments that made me like. You said you loved this movie. Where yeah. are all your pleasures? Um. Well, I mean, the pleasures are just basic satire, where it's just like it's it's a good satire. There's yeah. no other way to to put it. It's just like if you do if you hit the notes of satire well, um, it's funny. It's gonna be yeah. funny. Like it's hard to do, and that's why I think it's, and that's why I like it is because so satire like is that. very hard to hit. And they did it, and they hit it very well. They hit it in a way that wasn't pitch perfect. No, they hit it uh, right on the nose. But do you think they could make this movie to today and it be as funny and well done? No, because the jokes would be written better. Because you have to build off of the shoulders of this giant of a movie <laughs> in order to get to where we are. I now. thought the writing was funny. The, oh, yeah. the writing's good, and yeah. and it's very impressive that this was in two thousand one. You texted us a clip of you a clip of it. just giggling, of giggling <laughs> the, the the scene at the Wait, end. Where was that scene? Because I didn't yeah. see it in the movie. It was, it was towards a, the climax. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it was towards the end after they revealed that uh, she had a lisp and dude was not British. Oh. Um, after that scene, and then the government comes in, and he's and he's like, and she's telling them the big plan. Josie's telling them the big plan, and we're like, oh, they're trying to subliminal message or whatever. And then the government agent who knew the whole time was like, what? This is crazy. And then uh, Parker Posey in the background, very far off, is just like, what? You knew you knew the whole time, and he just cuts her <laughs> off. I, I love when people get cut off in comedy. It's good. It's just but, the movie's goofy. Yeah, it's, it's goofy. It's just yeah. joyously yeah. stupid at times. It is goofy, right? But um, and there are a lot of cartoonish characters, but there's a good enough straight man mm -hmm. with all three of them. Josie is Josie, straight man. Josie's Rosario a good straight man. Straight Rosario man. Dawson is a good straight man. To the point where when they're looking around and noticing all of the crazy mm -hmm. stuff happening, it works. You yes. know, where it's just like if you have a good straight man, all of that shit will totally believe will play. Will, totally. Um, where it's just like, what the fuck is going on over yeah. here? Is that Ray Bans? Is is Target every you know, like and yeah. she plays it's really, uh, she, pl Josie, uh, uh, Jennifer plays this with such like a perfect wide-eyed but angsty. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. She's just she's she's perfect. That was me. They're a perfect cast. Yeah. I really believe it's that. What they yeah. they really they really did pull it off. There's another uh, that funny haircut. part. That's what the, the haircut like, I wanted. Um, again with Parker Posey when the um, oh yes I know the, the, the rule of three. What the rule of three? Was that what you were gonna say? Yeah, maybe. Oh, where they're talking about when they're, when she's telling explaining the plan yes. to the government, and then yes. her in the feather outfit. Yes. yes, that to me is like give her an Oscar. She is incredible. So I funny. want her cast in everything. I feel like we were robbed of decades of Parker Posey dominance, and this movie. Well, Elizabeth Banks took her. Took yeah. her yeah. over, which is no, very fine. That, I'm, I'm okay a, with that. That's a good example of a scene where that could be written today way fucking funnier. Oh yeah, but wait, it's tell that. Oh yeah. yeah I cut you so off. the scene is um there she's telling the government the plan the first time or whatever the american government and all these other people who she calls foreigners which you shouldn't do no, <laughs> um, so she explains the subliminal messaging uh plan and then she uh like secretly turns her back and reveals her own plan to herself mm -hmm. and then they hear her yeah. because you know, in movies, it's it's in in movies you can have an internal monologue out loud to yourself, and it's usually just Soto or whatever you yeah. can only you can hear it. Um, but they hear her and they call it out, call and they're out. just like, um, I'm sorry, what did you just say? Uh, and, oh, nothing. And usually that is it deadens it, and uh -huh. she, and he's like, no, 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 I heard what you said. You said, and then not, you know, yeah, you were like, wait till they got what's coming to you and us too, and us too, and he's like, us too, right? He's and like, he's I like, heard you perfectly. And right. He's like, yeah, we all and heard we all you. heard you. <laughs> <laughs> like the guy in the middle, I love a fucking background bit. Oh yeah, my fucking that god! Was good. <laughs> he's just like, yeah, we all heard you. And yeah, that's his one line in the right, movie, but yeah. arguably the funniest part. Oh my god, that was a good. That bit. was a good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, they, they did it three times. They did they it kept three times. doubling down on yep. it. I fucked with I, that. And by the third time, I was like, oh, I, <laughs> yeah. Steph, you yeah. got me. Um, I, I really every scene with her, I just want to put in a museum. I, yeah. I mm -hmm. am She's so in, like the first moment where she lowers like the the um, yeah. you have like the whole United Nations comes into her office. And uh -huh. She's like, let me show you what we're doing yeah. at this record company. They lower into this Men in Black style control center where they reveal they're deciding all of culture from yeah. what people wear right. to what shoes they. And right. it's like to gay men. Slang. Again, yeah, <laughs> a great, yeah, a great um, <laughs> gay man. Yeah, a great uh, straight man scene yes. where the the audience, not, not the audience, the um, 
all of the UN or yeah. everybody there um, is acting like this is the weirdest shit that's yes. happening. And they're just like, what the fuck? And she's just straight up, straight yes. ahead playing it like very weird, very like goofy. Yeah. Just like, and then we do this and blah, blah, blah. Like the fucking ceiling isn't coming down mm -hmm. or like mm -hmm. there isn't a, a giant mm -hmm. elevator happening in the background. Mm -hmm. You're treated with a Mr. DNA from Jurassic Park sequence where yeah. Eugene Levy as himself uh, yes. narrates this entire plot that Emmy the US winning, government has Eugene to Levy. control teens. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Emmy winner. Uh, but I, I know we keep talking about this like sub subliminal messaging plot, but I... That to me is like, when I watch it back as, a, as an adult, I'm like, wow, this movie for kids called out the entire music industry and frankly, the movie industry. Yeah. It was yeah. like, hey, everything that you like as teens, yes. everything that we say is cool, we're just yeah. trying to sell the, you the shit. Wink, oh. The wink at the end yeah. where they're just like, it'll probably work better in movies. movies. Watch it with Josie and it was just it's like, okay, It's the best okay, movie ever. Good. And I was that's like, good. all right, that's funny. That's yeah. solid. And like the movie is aware and I'm sure the filmmakers know like, yes, we are also trying to sell you stuff, but like what you like and don't just like it because yeah. it's a little more. And then there's this great recurring uh, runner in the movie where people will hear a new song and they go, I want a Big Mac. Yeah. Orange is the new pink. And then they yeah. all run. And what I love about that, attention to detail. Again, these directors fucking crush it. Uh, their manager and and uh, and his sister. Yes. E every scene you see them in, they're in the same colored clothes right. that coordinates to what the world, what the right. world is, is doing. cool. Like, yeah. And as the movie the goes consumer. on, goes from orange to pink to yeah. whatever yeah. to blue. It's great like background gags. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's almost like cartoonish level background gags. Oh, 100%. You know, this is a it's it's a, a it's a live cartoon. It's a cartoon. Yeah. I do love like lines that I feel like can spring off into whole other projects. Uh. But when he said um uh, sorry, what's the point of being famous if the people you hated in high school don't kiss your ass later? Yep. <laughs> I was like, yo, that, that is, is that's a thing because boy. that'll happen yep. for those who become famous. Mm -hmm. Um, they'll kiss your ass and then it'll suck. Yep. And then you'll realize that you spent your entire life yep. trying to impress spite. people and spite people who now have more of a grip on your life than you ever Ooh, did. That was a truth bomb right yeah, there, Rick. That just sucks. You hear that, kids? I love it. And I know you thought that like that money should have been their, yeah. their motivator, but I love that they had that yeah. personal driver for their characters because it also shows like, the people who you think are cool, they're just broken, wounded people. And the right. people that make you feel bad for yeah. not being they're cool. They're all just people. They're just, and they're broken. Yeah. Everyone's broken. Everybody's just super normal. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna read through my list very quickly. I love the music, not just this, not just the band music. I think the score is a fucking slaps. It's Danny Elfman adjacent, <laughs> and I think it's awesome. All right. Uh, I think that the opening montage is a brilliant way to establish a friendship. I want to be with them. I think that they are the, the best friends. I'm in love with every person in this movie, male or female. I think they're all perfect. I think yeah. they're all beautiful. I think that they're wonderful actors. I uh, want to give a quick shout out to Missy Pyle as Alexandra. Oh, love uh, Missy Pyle. I, I saw her She's in a bar around. once and I was drunk and I just told her how much I loved her. Nice. And and then my friend Mark, who was uh, my roommate at the time, they connected on fr Words with Friends, the <gasps> Scrabble game. And wow. they he and Missy Pyle were just playing... <laughs> words with friends for oh, months after that wow. cool. because of a bond we She's made over relatable. Josie and the yeah. Pussycats. She's that girl that you go like, was she in that movie? Who, that That's girl? the other thing. It was just like words. Oh, we're very relatable. It's just like, okay, yeah. they're all normal people. Yeah. They just yeah. make money. And then my final pleasure, even though I could go on pleasures forever, uh, is actually a former guilt of mine. Mm -hmm. When I was growing up, I'm like, yo, the first act to this movie is just uh, uh, music video, music video, music video. Yeah. And some of them are kind of cheesy. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I now watching them, I love the style that they're leaning into. Like they, hate it. they went there, they try it. You fuck with it? I fucking hate it. Oh, you yeah. hate it? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, you are, I, we already know. My, Zach's like, I'm gonna cut that on. part out. But like them, like climbing up the Billboard chart, I think is so fun. And yeah. here's a fun fact baked into this: this movie is shot by Maddie Libatique. If you do not know who Maddie Libatique is. He is Darren Aronofsky's go-to cinematographer. Oh. One year after Requiem for a Dream, no, <laughs> did they? invented the funny. snorri cam. That fucking explains why my one of my top guilt was the fisheye lens on villains makes me want to fucking throw up. It makes me so fucking uncomfortable. That makes so much sense. If he did Requiem and then yeah. used that same fucking style he, listen this to this did filmography not belong in this movie hi requiem for a dream yeah the fountain yeah uh, a star is born josie and the pussy okay cats. so there are <laughs> we can, hey, there, now we enter guilt behind yes. behind the camera there are some very talented people there's yes. like really good writers really good directors yes. and uh, this young cinematographer that oscar no winner oscar maddie liberty wow. <laughs> um so like the again that, 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 that it was a lot 
that was so funny. <laughs> that goes so to the tone funny. of the thing, or the, the tone of the movie, why it was done so well. Yeah. It, or like, because everybody had a clear vision of mm-hmm. what it was gonna mm-hmm. be like, not mm-hmm. just like this scatterbrained, like, mm-hmm. okay, let's go almost there, but not yeah. really, or so, so on and so forth. I want you to just think for a second, and I know I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let go and let no, us get I'm, into guilt. I'm, yeah. I'm chilling. <laughs> just like, I, I know I'm gonna let you go, but to think of like every quote unquote trite teen girl comedy yeah this one was made with more intent and passion and love i guess that's my yeah. my final thought so I, I i'm getting ahead of myself the one of the guilts is that nothing will ever touch um not another teen movie yeah. level of things and it was it was the, the, not another teen movie was the better version of this, of where this. it's just like a pure, straight up comp. We are making yes. fun of this. Uh-huh. We're not going to We're play around it. and and like f- but fully yeah. try Rated to make R a mission. Versus a kids movie. That's yeah. Again, well, it was PG thirteen. Yeah. Yeah. So, they had whatever. anal jokes in yeah. there. <laughs> subliminally. Yeah. Subliminal bleed. Right. Um, Subliminal snowman. This is more not a guilt, but just like an overall gripe with um, this type of messaging, I guess, mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. people will say, OK, yeah, um, movies and music are subliminal and whatnot. And and I am I, I'm very I'm very woke and, uh. and all this stuff. And look at look at what the industry is doing to us while pushing a movie you. through the industry. Yes. So the fact that this was allowed mean that the means yes. that the thing that you're talking Thank about you. doesn't exist. Yes. Okay. You know, or not doesn't and exist. But like, you know, it's like mm-hmm. obviously mm-hmm. either it doesn't exist mm-hmm. or it's so far gone that even pointing pointing it out doesn't even matter. And that is my biggest motherfucking guilt that I think this movie is responsible for QAnon. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> I agree. What? I agree. Because I agree. Be- it is its, its own fucking enemy. Yeah. It, it is turns the- into yes. a weird feedback loop. Yes. Of okay, so we're, let, you no, look no, crazy. no, no. Think about it. Think about it. Okay, so you now look we're crazy. now we're fucking getting into it. Exactly. You're now fucking we're, falling I for am it. Code Monkey. Yeah. <laughs> now we're getting into it. Okay, you are so Code Monkey. I, I truly believe it's the reason Thank why you. QAnon exists. Yes. What the fuck? <laughs> no, no, but I, you can't keep saying that. I need a reason. No, but listen, but because because of the because of the the <laughs> separation of this. You think incels the, the, watch Josie and the Pussycats? No, cats? but I think <laughs> that enough people, the, the, the idea behind it, the en- enough people have heard about yes. this idea that uh, there is a secret the industry controlling and the people. government is controlling yes. people. And there is enough distance between 2001 yep. and 2021 that, to exactly. where people will forget that this movie came out. Die. They'll Thank forget you. that they Thank live you. came out. Zach and they'll be so like, mad. oh, this is this is a way of, this <laughs> is this is somebody, this isn't somebody's imagination somebody is actually doing Zach this is mad because he just woke up from taking the red pill right. <laughs> he just realized he was perpetuating a I've movie been unred pilled you've right. literally been nobody standing this movie and talking about it and promoting yeah. that it's your favorite movie to a fan base of teenage right. girls yeah nobody fucking Who this cares movie is for? nobody cares about you dog. <laughs> like at the end of the day True. Nobody cares about you. Nobody is trying to subliminally mm-hmm. mes- message you. Mm-hmm. They're advertising to you, yeah. sure. And they it's just like, yeah, the, I want a Big Mac because that burger looks good. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, you're choosing to eat the Big Mac. At the it end of the day. It is your choice. I think, what you're, I think what you're saying is very funny and very insightful. It's it's super funny. It's, How, it's, it's more, I'm leaning more on the joke of it than, than the actual truth. But as someone who deeply loves this movie, I am going to uh, <laughs> say that I'm offended. Hardly so, so offend. I think that the movie, look, yes, it's about subliminal messaging, but it's about consumerism through media and how media. Yeah. Oh man, I'm falling apart. No, yeah, yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. No, but it's the no, it is the it's right, about it's the light jabbing of consumerism through media. But can't you see that parallel is causing media. people? <sighs> okay, Zach, okay, yeah, come on, you got this. Defend right, the movie you love. It doesn't have to be like so cut and dry. Like it's not yeah. a bad thing or a good thing, right? Like I yeah, watched Q the Q and on doc, like, and then I was upset that I found myself weirdly upset yeah. that Twitter had blocked. QAnon stuff because I wanted to see what people are saying. I was like, you guys, we found Code Monkey. Sorry, spoiler alert. I was like, we found the person. Yeah. Like, talk about it. And yeah. no one was talking about it because it had been. They can't. You can't. You, they'd been silenced. Yeah. And so weirdly, I was like, okay. And, and that's where the other side of things exactly. are and the things exactly. that they were 
trying and to so, be so upset about with the not the, being able to the, disprove it is yeah. perpetuating these far alt right groups right to be able it's to just like look at how look doing. at how censored we are now and all of this mm -hmm. stuff and the government is controlling us and blah blah blah. Yeah. But this movie is telling young girls don't just like things because you are told to like them. Like what you like. Be true to yourself. Being told and be aware. Movie. <laughs> what? Movie. And, it's and be aware that they're trying to sell you stuff. And and like yes, when you watch back, is so it's important. overt. The like we, we talk about now how the product placement in the background is overt. I promise you, yeah. myself and all the people that watched as a kid, we didn't see it. It went over our well, head. That's the problem. Is the message that they're literally saying about this movie, they never fucking call it out. Yeah. If Josie mean? was like, they do it. They do, look they at do all these... Line. It, yeah, it's one a total line, throwaway. And, and then not... they go play a concert at the Josie and the Pussycats concert presented by Kodak. And yeah. it's like the thing. They and don't we all slap. agree it slaps. If everything, <laughs> at, at the end of the movie, if everything fell away, if all of the product placement just fell around, it just went away. And it's just like, and, oh, yeah. well, not, I, I don't even no, think that. Right. I think it's just like if it, if the rose colored glasses yes, went down but and you start to see the movie. Which maybe that's the message. Like is even thing. when you're still aware, you're still you're part still of the fucking system. Whoa. That's deep. That what I just blew my own mind. <laughs> I am aware. I know every day I'm being sold to, and yeah. that's the time where I'm like, okay, I'm not. If you're not selling the product, you are the. But if you, I think if if they went for this, and if they did purposefully, then that's fucking brilliant. Yes. If it will, goes over your head the first time you watch it, you don't that's see the bad. product placement. Um, it's great, but because of how subtly placed it is, quote but unquote subtly bad. placed. But. After the end of the movie, and you go back and watch it again, and you just see how much after it you know the message. You have that brilliance. But if you know that the, the brilliance is at the end of the movie, where they call it out, where they're just like, just be yourself, blah blah blah. Product placement. They yes. never call out the product placement. They never, they call never it product verbally placement. product. That's my problem with the movie. Um, and I really do believe, and this is where I keep coming back to this. I think that watching this within the context of the era in which it was made, yep. this is a time capsule okay. and mm -hmm. a reflection. Yeah. Because it's not right. just oh, this is a movie of this era right. this is a movie of of the era aware of the era that it's in making fun of itself right. yeah. uh, making incisive commentary against mm -hmm. itself yeah. in the sh in well, the casing the comp something like it's yeah. still it's it's feeding you it like uh what is it it's 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 giving you a pill you can swallow, but Literally also giving you the medicine. Yeah. Right? But like it's it's in the form of something that is digestible and fun and light, but it has a point. We're too fucking once the internet came around, that shit stopped, right? Like we started being like, Oh my god, we know the psychology behind colors. We know why all mm -hmm. fast food like the internet We got too smart for this. it. Yes. So that this is two thousand one. Like, no, uh, but the, isn't that interesting? Right. And like, don't you see a lot less celebrities that die young? And because we have the knowledge and the awareness of it, and it's like it plays perfectly into the the time that it was representing because it was this pre-internet era where you know what those stars could have been fucking killed off by the music executive industry for yeah. all we know because but we they didn't know any better. They weren't. They weren't. Freak accidents happen. This they is never, this is weren't. promoting conspiracy theorists as children. I don't yeah. think anyone watching this movie believed in conspiracy theories. I one hundred percent. As soon as Karen, YouTube came out, they did. Karen's out there. Love I Josie and the Pussycat. How dare you? <laughs> Don't you put Karen. The QAnon fuckers Karen are not my Josie people. Josie and the Pussycat. We are separate. If you know a Karen, go ask her right now if she loved the Josie and the Pussycat the movie amount, and comment below. The amount below. of people that will go back to the movie they live and be like, they were trying to tell us something. And it's like, <laughs> no, they weren't. It was a fucking person <laughs> just having, like, it, it is somebody who saw saw something they didn't like saw a subliminal message or whatever and then exaggerated it for your um for your entertainment I, yeah i, I, guess, really I want to say I, like um, i i enjoy i laugh like there were yeah. a couple things that i laughed at the scene where she was like if i could go back in time i would go and meet snoopy i thought that was a, <laughs> that was that was a fucking bar i was I, like oh yeah that's good <laughs> that's I a also good not liked her lines about coasters being her like favorite part she about, loves coasters about yeah. stardom is she's like look at all these coasters yeah her oh, singing my. um if you're happy and you know it in and and clapping and dropping so, the so many wonderful details that I love in this movie. One of my favorites is when DeJore dies on the TV. It's R.I.P. DeJore, 2000, 2000 to 2001. 2001. It's so, so good. Like, so there's just no, so many, there so is, many little, yeah. like, uh, during their montage of them rising to stardom, it was Drew Barrymore, Cameron Diaz, and Lucy Liu rumored plays. to play them. Like, yeah. it just... The I, little joke that really the got me. It was time capsule yeah. of the time, and yeah. I think it should say underground, buried by dirt, like time capsules <laughs> wow. do. Damn. That's 
That's my final thought. Damn. You can't be both Josie and Spice World. I think you had to take a yeah, side. Yeah, you have to take one. Because the Spice World is the antithesis of... Mm -hmm. Yeah, Spice World. So uh, we filmed the Spice World episode. I'm not sure if it'll come out uh, or when. So either get excited or go back and watch. But yeah. to me, Spice World is like, hey, what if we took this movie but took out everything brilliant about everything it? Everything good about it. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. Okay, Zach, tell us why. Give us your. Well, big... I got fun facts, motherfucker. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, nice. Great. How fun are these going to be? I really thought today was going to go so different. Oh! I, yeah, I was fine. so excited. I feel like that's Zach fine. is actually affected. No, I, it's all good. I I just. This is going to. Don't worry. Your time will come with what's the fucking movie? Upgrade. Oh, upgrade? Yes. Oh, will, I don't worry. I have every single. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't matter. Nothing Nothing you say will matter to me. That's it's how until, I feel about this. Like, until I just, you're there. Yeah, no, I can't believe it. I, I am, I'm ready. Before we get into fun facts, if I could just have a moment alone. Oh, okay. I, it's really upsetting, upsetting yeah. to just, you know, you think you love your friends and then you just find wow. out they're wrong. And you're just like, God, do it's I even know them at all? This is like the um, how uh, Joker was a good movie, but it was wildly irresponsible. <laughs> um, that, uh, quoting Matt Real in that he I did not make that up. But Matt Real said that. And I was like, yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. it was. You cannot kill somebody on live TV while mm. people are killing people mm. on live TV. If you're going to come into my podcast about Josie and the Pussycats shit on Josie and then tell me that Joker is a good movie to my face. Oh, God. <laughs> we got beef. Oh, my God. It is a well done movie. I think Fucking it's the same thing. Movie. This is the same thing. Speaking of beef, I'm hungry. Yeah, Yum. I'm hungry, hungry. Okay, so I've got some fun facts. Uh, this one, uh, first I love. So, uh, Josie and the Pussycats from the Archie Comics universe. Uh, but due to the level of profanity and adult themes, the family from the Archie Comics who published the original comics they uh, discourage people from seeing <gasps> wow. this movie. What? They, what is that licensing? They disowned it. How did it. they do that? Yeah. And then weird enough, it's strangely. Like Stephen King in The Shining? Yeah. He, they were just like, oh, no, we didn't know this was what this was going to be. Can we're, we watch we're the for kids. Can, can we, we watch, watch The Shining? No, absolutely not. The Shining is the I best movie of all time. I 100% will not watch what The are you Shining. Talking about, you, the Shining I is... have so much childhood trauma attached to that movie. Oh, I'm no. obsessed with The Shining. That's The like, Shining is... Is it a guilty pleasure? I don't care. No, Let's just I don't do think it. it is. It's just a straight up pleasure. I think it's just a straight up pleasure. Uh, so, but strangely enough, uh, years later, they would promote Riverdale based on the same stories, which has way more adult yeah. themes and is way more sexual. Right. So Because they grew up. Yeah, I think, I, I, yeah, I think it is. I think Archie Comics realized they needed money. Yeah. Okay. That is also. <laughs> uh, so this is genuinely fun fact. So Val played by Rosario Dawson, uh -huh. who I think I crushed love. it. Yeah. I, she's she's crush. a perfect oh, Jesus Christ. Christ. person. Yeah. I, I cannot believe we <laughs> got 50 minutes through this and we have we not had, lusted we had over nothing her. nothing but good things to say about her. And we've only said good things. About I her. saw her in person once. <gasps> what? Was she's exciting. so nice. Can you believe yeah. she did Eric tried. fucking Andre? Yes. <gasps> okay. uh, also, <laughs> Cory Booker. Because funny what? people yeah. have are attractive. Yes, funny is. also oh, that's why you do stand up. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, no, I do stand up because I'm a broken person. <laughs> that but, and broken um, people know that they can get chicks by being funny. During the film's 16th anniversary celebration in 2017, nice. uh, co-director Harry Elfont revealed some of the people who first auditioned <gasps> for the role Fun. of yes. Val. We love this. So Val is uh, Rosario Dawson. Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to get two out of the way first, two of the three, because uh, unfortunately both tragically died <gasps> oh, young. No. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Whom? Aaliyah <gasps> I, I auditioned for this role um, and they said that she was very serious and thoughtful but they wanted more of like a comedy yeah, energy yeah, okay yeah. so don't you dare say anything about Aaliyah she would have sucked she would have been bad. She wouldn't have worked. She would not. I, frankly, sorry, I, Miles. The I, audio was insane. Here's, I mean, I genuinely believe no one works in this role except for Rosario, Rosario Dawson. Dawson. Okay, I think like yes, it is perfect. Rosario Dawson you. barely works in this role. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, also, Lisa Left Eye from TLC. Oh my God. And she got through two rounds of auditions. Um, and she would have been goofy. She she's been very funny. She really wanted but the role. But she's almost too... She's like, too iconic. She she's stands too out too much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Rosario yeah. was perfect yeah. for this. Yeah. yeah, I agree. But then this is the real oh, fucking fuck. crazy one. Beyonce <gasps> Knowles Carter. Beyonce auditioned for the role and they thought she was too, too shy. I believe I, it. I Because Beyonce is shy. I believe she was too shy, shy and quiet at the time. But can Don't you, you fucking say anything about Beyonce? Oh, 
Are you out of your? I love Beyonce. Okay. Are you out of your? I don't know. You went crazy with Aaliyah there. I wasn't sure. Oh, I, I mean, I love Aaliyah. Aaliyah. I love all. Three. I, love I don't actually I don't think, think Beyonce would have been good. No, I I adore all three of those women. I think, think she been great. Are, she was great. Yeah. Dream Girls. I think Beyonce would have killed that. You're but I don't think she was. She's old. She, I don't think she was old enough. Yes, for it. she would have been too young. Not, her acting not, chops weren't like all the way out there yet. I also I just I don't believe her in that role. Big way too fame. She was super fun in um Austin Powers. Yeah, yeah. So I think she would have done it. But she played a straight man she she had there was some was cheeky there. there was some tongue in cheek can you imagine watching this movie back and beyonce's the bass player but like, can you imagine okay. beyonce and tara reed being close friends yeah, yeah. do you think things would have gone differently <laughs> no, <laughs> for tara? i really want like justice for tara oh, reed that right. nip slip it was the wrong time this was like the la I, I she's just so fucking funny in this movie well, uh, we could talk about our mutual uh, unanimous love for this movie forever, yeah. uh, but we now have to decide, is this movie a pleasure, a guilty pleasure, or just plain guilty? I know Kelsey wants to go last. No, I actually want to go first because I feel like you should be able to bring it home. Okay, great. Uh, this movie's guilty. And I Fucking stated much. all of my reasons why I think this was the jump off point for some conspiracy <laughs> theorists getting a lot of confidence and perpetuating a system in itself. I'd like to go back in time and uh, reveal the truth that Crossroads is a guilt. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> it's it's one of the worst movies I've ever watched. You denaming Miss Shonda Rhimes and I won't allow it. That's super funny. <laughs> um, Fucking be honest. No, no. Being honest, I think it was a guilty pleasure. Okay. For sure. For okay. sure. For sure. Because it is still... <laughs> It, at the end of the day, it's still a well done movie, although it does perpetuate a couple of <laughs> things, <laughs> perpetuate a couple of things. And that is unfair. It is unfair to blame how dumb of an audience the American audience. No, yeah, I mean, no, you're un, right. It's unfair to do that. It's it unfair is. to blame the creators of oh. this for people taking it too seriously. I wonder if this movie would have done better like over in Europe or Asia. Probably. Cause Probably because like, they get it because they're Americans. not yeah, yeah. It, the same way that um what is it um it, idiocracy is um telling us a lot of things right uh -huh. now we're just like as soon as that movie came out everybody's like this is so crazy this is so stupid mm -hmm. but if I was a betting man if I was a conspiracy theorist I'd be like oh this movie was made by yeah. the government telling us yep. that we're gonna have an idiot as a president. Zach is having such a rethink about but, himself um, right now. Not even I close. can see it, he's not even <laughs> yeah. listening. So I think it was a guilty pleasure because it's all just right. it's still a well done movie. It's still hitting all the beats that they <laughs> and intended. And made you laugh. And it made me laugh. It made me laugh pretty hard. Rick's giggle. giggle. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, Zach. I present to you a perfect movie. <laughs> <laughs> a movie that- This the, is- The this world is, is okay. was not okay. ready for. Yeah. I really, with this all is, my heart, believe that this movie was was ahead of its time and too smart for its own good. I, I, so this is where I be, I am starting to believe uh, that I'm brainwashed. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm starting to believe in our overall philosophy that it goes pleasure. No, it goes guilty pleasure and then guilty, guilty pleasure, pleasure. <laughs> yes. because i would ride way harder for a guilty pleasure than i would a pleasure because i'm just like oh yeah. that's just a good movie yeah. that's a solid movie that's a movie that does well I think so you're right. guilty but pleasure is the crowning guilty Jesus. pleasure is the movie where you have to fight for yes in but order you, for it but to you be you genuinely good. think it's a pleasure yeah well you don't think it's a guilty pleasure no i know it's a guilty pleasure because this movie's not made for but me but you said it's the perfect movie so you and think I it's think a pleasure no in i mean that that's just me personally no i agree with you i think yeah. guilty pleasure is the best the winner I think guilty pleasure but I podcast. think guilty pleasure also admits that there are flaws in the movie oh, yes. the yeah. flaws that you have to aggressively so is it a guilty pleasure cult classic all of those things ooh we yeah. tested him I present a film that is ahead of its time <laughs> yeah that I, I think that for what it aimed to do it knocked it out of the park. Yes. Yeah. And I know that this movie's not made for me. I know that it's silly. I know that it's cheesy. I know there are moments where the logic jumps from A to Z like crazy, but it is just absolute pure joy. And I really, the soundtrack slaps. Their friendship lives rent free in my head for the rest of time. Kristen Wiig watched Parker Posey in this and said, I will try my entire life to top it yeah. and she will never come close. Oh, she did. I she think that Alan did. Cummings is yeah. is Chris perfectly Chris iconic. Chris oh, this Got it. I fucking love this movie yeah. and really Aww. more than anything, I want to go back in time and tell my little sister, you're right. <gasps> 
That's and what meet this is all about. Snoopy. <laughs> and meet Snoopy. I just I there are look, fate could have had any movie get stuck yep. in my DVD player. Yeah, that's the other part of it. And I that's sure great. as shit am glad that it was this one. That's kind of beautiful. Yeah, that that's, that's what it's really about. Yeah. Is it it chose you. You didn't yeah. choose it. Yeah. Yeah, for you that's great. Take a second look at it. <laughs> for everybody else, don't waste your fucking yeah. time. <laughs> no, 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 no. Watch, watch you have the an HBO Max subscription, then go for it. Wait. Watch the movie. <laughs> I think it's, I think it's, worth a watch. it's a delight. And and again, really like for our young fans who were not there for the TRL era, this movie yeah. is the perfect encapsulation of what it was, what and also and everything that was wrong with yeah. it. Yeah. To be a celebration and a takedown at the same time. Whew. I actually missed the TRL era because I man. wasn't even. I, I didn't have cable, didn't watch MTV. Oh, no didn't shit. Didn't get the top 10 countdown with Carson Daly? I that was my that childhood. DJ, same. Every day after school, that was it. Dude, yeah. I would run home every day and I would call in TRL. <gasps> and, and I Hoping? was. So, I, well, to get on air, I don't think you could get on air, but I wanted my music videos to play because, like, Destiny's Child, I fucked with so hard. Guys, <laughs> I, I have, like, that. Destiny's <laughs> Child's DVDs, <laughs> Casey and JoJo, yes, love and, and uh, Will Smith. Like, those were, oh, that was my holy fucking trinity. Yeah. And they would always be in like the seven to ten spot which means you get maybe five to ten seconds of the music video whereas in sync at number one you would yeah, get like a thing, full 45 yeah. or whatever so i was like guys get my music videos to the top that's sad that this is how archaic our technology was that we had to call into a station to hope that they played our music couldn't so. watch the entire oh my say my name music video as a kid not until youtube baby well, guys, thanks for joining. Uh, <laughs> this has been Guilty Pleasures. Uh, let us know what you think of the Josie Jim the Pussycats movie. And you better say you loved it or Zach will unfriend you. I will you. come to your house and I will kick you in somewhere. Okay. Wherever you take, wherever my foot wherever is. Wherever it takes. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, look, let me know what you think, honestly and truly. But if you want to be my friend, you better be right. I'm Garrett Bernard on all of the things. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> yeah, I'm got Kelsey it. Dare on all the things. Hey. And at Corn Diddy on all the things. <laughs> Tell your friends about the show. Please rate us. Uh, it helps people find it. Guys, That's I found good. out our buddy fucking Gustav, major shout out. He was like, hey, people have recommended your show to me. People what? that don't even know us. I'm like, oh shit, we're real. Yeah. We're real. We yeah. it, well, we're in the flesh. Look at us. How about that? Vaxxed, waxed, and Garrick's back. <laughs> uh, and until next time, Guilty Pleasure is the best podcast ever. <laughs>